there, welcome back. So have you ever heard the phrase, neurons that fire together, wire together? This phrase was first coined back in 1949 by a guy named Donald Hebb, and he was a Canadian neuropsychologist who discovered that every experience, every thought, every feeling, every physical sensation triggers thousands of neurons that pass information back and forth and create a neural network. And when you repeat an experience over and over again, those neural networks literally get stronger and bigger and ingrained more deeply into the brain. We used to believe that the human brain was pretty much done cooking by about our mid-20s, but now we know that simply isn't the case. Experiences that are intense, prolonged, or repeated will physically change the anatomy and the chemistry of the brain. Neuroscientists refer to this process as experience-dependent neuroplasticity. All it means is the brain is a muscle, and like any other muscle in the body, the more we use different regions of that muscle, the stronger those regions get. For example, studies show that black cab drivers in London use one part of their brains over and over again, and as a result, it's bigger than yours and mine. If you've ever been to London, then you know that the streets are ridiculously complex and they're not constructed on any kind of typical grid pattern that actually makes sense. The test to become a London cabbie, called the knowledge, is perhaps the most difficult test in the world. And it takes years of study to memorize over 25,000 streets. And then on top of that, to learn all the businesses and landmarks on those streets. It's the equivalent of having an atlas of London imprinted on the brain. Neuroscientists have compared brain scans of London cabbies with people like you and me and discovered that the London cabbie has a larger, more neuron-dense hippocampus than we do. And this is where our GPS lives, um, but it is also a small part of it that mediates anxiety-related behaviors. Simply put, the more they use it, the bigger and stronger it gets. Okay, so admittedly, you may not be interested in driving a black cab in London or even growing your hippocampus. Maybe you just don't need a new neural GPS, although I can't imagine why not. But you should be a little bit interested in neuroplasticity because it's at the root of research on rewiring the brain for better emotional health and overall well-being. There are a wealth of studies that show that the practice of gratitude and extending kindness to others enable us to embed positive experiences in the brain and over time rewire it to be much more receptive to the kind of neural activity that makes us smarter and happier. That's the good news. The bad news is that we can also rewire the brain to be more receptive to negative emotions and the neural consequences that come with them. Numerous studies have shown that for evolutionary reasons, the brain reacts far more strongly to negative experiences than to positive ones. It's called the negativity bias, but intense, repeated, or prolonged negative experiences will actually grow and strengthen our stress receptors and connections. So, embed a little happiness in your brain today and appreciate the good things in your corner of the world. Or better yet, go make a few good things happen. There is power in kindness, not just for the people around you, but for you too. Small random acts of kindness will literally change your brain. I wrote about that right here. If you wanna learn more about how the brain works and how to make it work better, check out my book, Happier Hour with Einstein, and the full color companion gratitude journal, available now on Amazon. If you enjoyed this Neural Nugget, pass it on to someone in your corner of the world, because life is always better when you share the good stuff.